So today the topic is uh, electricity. Now I'm not a real electrician. I'm, I don't even play an electrician on YouTube. Whatever electrical information I give you is uh, backyard knowledge. Um, check with a real electrician and local codes before you attempt to copy any of this. But there is some pretty cool stuff here where eight years ago I had to do a job in Chicago, downtown, at a townhouse. In the fourth story, the guy had a um, queen size or even king size bed and some European bed frame that was all like one part and he couldn't get it up the stairs. So he cut it all apart and then wanted me to weld it back together in his bedroom. So I chose TIG welding, but at the time I didn't have a 110 volt TIG welder and I didn't have a 300 foot extension cord either. So the guy claimed he was an electrician for what that means or what it's worth and um, made an adapter cable for me where I could plug into two 110 outlets and then run my welding machine that was a 220 only machine in his house, in his bedroom and I welded the bed frame together and the guy was pretty happy. So that same cable that the guy built, I don't know if it's legal or not, but it got me out of a pinch a few times. Um, I like to share some basic information on how electricity works from what I understand how you can make things work and how you can run any 220 welder on 110 as long as it's not too powerful and the amp draw is not too powerful. So let's get to it. So for those of you that have electrical lines and utility lines above ground, here's like a pole, utility pole. On the very bottom here, that's like your telephone, cable TV, and internet. Then uh, this line up here is the power supply to your house, 110 and 220 volt. And up there, those wires, that's your high voltage line. And in our area here, they just upgraded the poles a little bit and upgraded all the high voltage lines and switch those up from um, 4700 to like 25 or 27,000 volts. So on the far top here, those three wires, that's technically three phase, 27,000 volts. You see the transformer here ties into one of those three phases. Then it goes down into the transformer and on the th transformer there's three wires coming out. So the three wires that are coming out, the one on the far left and then the one on the far right, those are your hots. The middle one is kind of like a ground. The hots go into the two black here and then the ground goes into a silver looking one. Here you see the splice to my house, the two black ones and then the silver looking one right there. The silver looking one is basically the common. The common is typically grounded like outside your house, possibly outside the city. And then the lines just run over to the house. And here they are, the one black, the other black and then the silvery one which the silvery one here goes into another black one insulated and then they come here down that pipe into the meter socket. So what these are is the two blacks are 110 apiece and then the silvery one is like the common. So the wires come in there's a main breaker in the panel this one here is on the bottom corner there and this breaker controls all these other breakers here and each individual one of those is for 110 volt circuits. This one is a double breaker which is for 220. It's a common trip breaker. The way how this works is the two black lines that come in outside, one goes here, one goes there. Then the line that's like all bare exposed outside is the white one in here, the common. And then there's a green one, which is the ground and they have like the bus bars. 
the green one is attached to a ground rod in the building. And then each 110 electrical outlet gets one hot one, one white one, one green one. The 220 outlets get either two hot and a green or two hot and a white and a green, depending on the style of the outlet. Now, technically, every one like this one is the same like this one, like that one, like that one. All these are like the, let's call it A wire outside, one of the black ones. This is the B wire, and then this one, this one, and this one, they're all B wires. In order to get 220, you need to have an A and a B. So, depending on your style of electrical outlet, this one here, for example, has a hot, another hot, and a ground. Where this one up here has a hot, another hot, a white one, the common, and the ground. So depending on your application, there's all sorts of different plugs. So this is the cord that the guy made for me. There's two 110 plugs, and then here's the 220 outlet. My welding machines use this style of outlet, so for what it's worth, other people like to use this style. Or um, if you run your machine off a generator, a generator may have that style. They all basically do the same thing. So the way how the plug works that I use is there is a hot here, this is a 110, and this is a 110, and together this one against this one, they measure 220. This is a ground. The way how this plug works is this is a 110, this is a 110, and this is a ground. Same concept. Let's talk about color coding. This is a regular 110 plug, 15 amp. Typically there is three wires connected to it. The black one is the hot one, it's a 110. The green one is the ground one. And the white one is the common. So looking at the plug, this is the hot, the black one. This one is the white one, the common. And this one is the green one, the ground. So this is how 110 plugs are wired. Some of the manufacturers that do welding machines if they have a three conductor cable, they do the same thing. They use black for one hot, then they use the white for the other hot, and the green for the ground. Now, from what I understand is, you're supposed to use black for a hot, red for the other hot, and then green for the ground. If you have a welding machine, you don't use the white one at all. But if you only have a three conductor cable, then these two will be hot, this one is the ground, and this one will just be non-existent. So, on this outlet here, where we have four possible connections, we also have four wires. We have a red here, a black there, or vice versa. The white goes here, the green goes there. So now, how did the guy do this? where he took two 110 plugs and made 220 out of it. So essentially what he did is he used the black out of here and the black out of there to go to either one of those and then the two greens together to go to this. The two white ones are not used at all. Let's take a look at the inside. out of the orange cord, the black one goes here, the green one goes there, out of the green cord, the green one goes there, the black one goes there, the white ones are cut short and insulated with tape. So now, of course, you have to plug into two different 110 legs. As I mentioned earlier, there's an A leg and a B leg, and in order to get 220, these have to be on different legs, on different circuits. Two different circuits as far as one leg going into a black one and one going into a red one. 
That's why a double pole breaker with common trip is used for 220. This here is what it looks like. And this is the back side of it. Now don't mistake it for one of these breakers. These are two individual circuits, but they are on the same leg. They only tie into one leg in the breaker box, as you can see here on the back side. If you have breakers like this, one for example for the living room and one for the hallway, and if they are right next to each other in the breaker box, then they are on different circuits. You could plug one of those 110 plugs in the living room and one in the hallway, and you have 220 on your outlet. You measure from the ground to one of the hots, and you see this is 123.6. From the ground to the other hot is 123.4. From the hot to the hot is either 0 or 240, 247. That's what we have here at my shop. So if the meter is showing 0 or 1 or 2 volts, then you hooked into the same leg. If you're properly connected, you're hooking into two different legs and the voltage adds up. If you're showing only like one or two volts on the meter, these would not light up on the simple tester. So now you have to go to your welding machine, read the tag on the back side, and look at the maximum amperage draw. This machine here, for example, has a maximum draw of 35 and a half amps at 230 volts, which typically household breakers are 15 or 20 amps. If there is two 20 amp circuits that you're tapping into, like one for the hallway, one for the living room, there's no lights on, there's no other devices drawing power out of those circuits, and those circuits are pretty much dedicated to the welding, you can draw up to 20 amps out of those actually for a short time a little bit more till it blows but it's a 20 amp so this machine has a max draw at 35 amps a 200 amp output so in reality you're only getting about 120 maybe 140 amps welding output so other machines are geared a little bit different the thing to note here is this is the max draw the effective current draw is 18.7 amps which the effective current draw also accounts for the duty cycle of the machine. As long as that is under 20 amps, you are pretty much safe to run, I was told, that machine on the 20 amp breaker. Um, of course, under maximum load it will pop, but y you can be running maximum load on it in the first place. And if you would be running maximum load, the machine would go into overheat eventually. So it's a good way to get you by in a pinch if all you have is a 220 volt machine and you want to use it on a 110 volt circuit.